Northwest High School is one of two high schools in the Northwest Local School District. We serve 950 students in grades 9 through 12. We're located in the northwestern suburbs immediately adjacent to the city of Cincinnati. Of our 950 students, approximately two-thirds identify as a student of color. Almost 60% qualify for free and reduced lunch. 21% of our students have an IEP, and 8% of our students qualify for services as an English language learner. With our ESSER funding that we received during the 2020-21 school year, we were charged with the challenge of how can we best support teachers and rebound from the pandemic in a way that we were stronger and better than we were before the pandemic. What we decided to do was to contract coaches through our county ESC. We went with an instructional coach, a data coach, an assessment coach, and an intervention coach. And then the challenge became, how do we set up a model to really frame that work with teachers? We set up a two-week rotation where our teachers meet in content-based TBTs. They meet with the coaches as needed. They discuss things like assessments. They review data. They talk about instruction and planning and what they want to accomplish in the next two weeks, as well as their long-range plans. The other week during that two-week rotation, teachers meet individually in two 20-minute sessions with the coaches. And these touch points are more individualized. They're more about what that teacher wants to work on as part of their professional growth plan in the evaluation system, or also uh, what they want to work on in their own classroom. It could be around engagement or management or other strategies that they want to try. Teachers have that time and that support, and we wanted to keep it flexible for them to work on what they wanted to focus on, while also balancing that with driving the work done in teacher-based teams. It's been very exciting throughout the course of this year to see the teacher-based teams evolve and really grow organically with the coaches. Once those relationships were built early in the year, it really took off. What you'll see in the documentary we're sharing with you today is that we've got teams who've been doing this work for several years and they're performing at a very high level with very little support that's needed. You'll also see that we have teams who are just starting this journey and they're working very in intensively with the coaches to start that work. And we've got teams who are somewhere in the middle. We're excited to share this with you. Uh, we appreciate you joining us for this presentation. So the original plan for coaching was that teachers would attend a TBT meeting once every two weeks. That's a teacher-based team that always incorporated a principal, administrator, and then uh, also a coach. Between those meetings, they would also have two coaching times. Uh, they would meet with a coach, usually about 20 minutes in length, depending on what they wanted to do. What happened was during the TBTs, a lot of us coaches realized that the teams really could use some more time together. Some of them just wanted to collaborate on planning, incorporating strategies into their lessons. Some of them wanted to do curriculum alignment. Others wanted to look at their data. So they wanted to do all these things, but they needed to do it together so that they could discuss their classes that they collaborated on. Some of them wanted to work together as part of their actual PGP goals, which is their professional growth plan. And then others just wanted to work together just because it's a comfort factor. They didn't know us coaches coming into the building this year. So to meet with somebody that um, was a friend of theirs with the coach kind of helped out with that. And so what kind of has developed is this system where they still have the TBTs every two weeks, but then they go on. And according to, to what they're doing in their TBTs, we often extend that into coaching for the other session. Now what happened was uh, I happened to be meeting with a government team and we have been doing some backward unit planning and I said, well, let's get in our assessment coach, Becca, so that she can help you design an assessment. And they said, well, we already meet with her. I said, wonderful. I said, well, then at the end of the, the unit, after we get done planning and going through your, your assessment, we'll, we'll have Taylor come in, who's the data coach, and you can start analyzing your data. And they said, we already have that planned. I said, well, how come I didn't know this? And they said, well, we just kind of come in and, and we expect a coach to show up whenever. I said, let's make this more intentional. And so what we started doing was actually the coaching cycle, which I believe that our principal started kind of doing with TBTs already. So it was kind of a natural progression from what we were already doing. What we ended up doing was uh, a lot of times Becca comes in as the assessment coach. She starts prepping for the, the beginning of the unit getting down what standards the, the teachers want to cover, and then creating an assessment for the end of the unit. I come in after that and we do the backwards unit design. And then once they get to the end of their unit, they have Taylor come in as the assessment coach 
and they go over their data and assessment to see if there's any changes that we want to make. And then we just keep repeating that cycle over and over again. That is how the uh, coaching cycle, cycle works. With the coaches, I've done some one-on-one -on -one conversations with them, planning strategy sessions where they would discuss different strategies to implement to engage students in instruction. Also going in and then, um, sitting around the table having conversations about ideas that I may have or something that I may have a question about. So they've been very supportive for me since they've been here. Whenever I had a question or wanted to try a new strategy, we would talk about it first, and then the coach would come in to the classroom and model the strategy for me with the students. You know, because of their encouragement, it's, it's helped me grow in my confidence I'm in the classroom. They've been open, so because of that, if I have a professional question to ask them, I could go to them and not feel as if they don't hear me. With coaching, we've done a lot of different things. I feel like with my classes, one of the biggest things is that the coaches will come into my classes actually and sit and observe like the things that we work on in coaching. I think the biggest thing is that they actually know them. It's not something where I just talk about my students and say, this class is really struggling with this or what have you. I, they actually come in and they know them. So they've seen them. My students know who they are. And so they've been able to help me adapt my teaching to actually fit real students. We have grown a ton. From the beginning of the year, we weren't able to sign anything. They've exceeded my expectations. They've exceeded their own expectations. The coaches have really helped trying to figure out how do we meet the exact needs of my kids and actual strategies for me personally. I knew that I had these high expectations. I wasn't sure how do I actually execute these things that I want for my students. And I feel like the coaches gave me legit strategies for my actual students uh, to meet those goals that I had. So we use coaching cycles in various ways to support the different needs of our teachers at Northwest. There are three different types of coaches at Northwest. We have an instruction coach, a data coach, and an assessment coach. Within those different roles, what we decided to do was kind of split up and kind of meet teachers where they needed to be. We like to start off with assessment, where we're looking at the different assessments for the units even though it's not time for the assessment. What we feel best about that is that it's gonna drive that instruction as we do it. So we meet with the assessment first. From there, the instruction coach comes in and she works to make sure that we're hitting all those important parts in the assessment, making sure that we're hitting all those standards. And then when it comes time to give the assessment, the data coach is gonna step in and analyze that data and kind of reflect on the whole process. What did we need to do? Where do we kind of go from here? It really depends on that cycle, depending on the different team or the different individual, how often or where we kind of rotate back. In a perfect world, we would hit the cycle every single time, all the time. But sometimes it's a need for more data, like coming back to more data, bringing those formative assessments and summative assessments. Additionally, this doesn't necessarily have to be done with three to four coaches. Depending on the coach's comfort, they could do the cycle all by themselves if they wanted to, where they would just kind of roll from assessment into instruction, into data and reflection on their own. It wouldn't necessarily need to have multiple people coming in, especially if you're in a district where you don't have multiple people as a resource. Setting the culture is huge. Relationships and culture have to be your top tier when you're working with anybody, especially when you're coming in and you're working with teachers. In order to have those big accountability talks with your teachers, in order to get down to conversations that could be difficult, you have to build that relationship. You can't just come in on day one and say, hey, we're gonna do all of these things to your curriculum and also redo all of your assessments if I don't have a relationship with somebody. So that is really important. We've identified four really important factors that need to happen before we're able to start these coaching cycles or to even bring in a second person. So relationships are usually built one coach per team or one coach per individual at first. And then later on, depending on the comfort of that team, then we may bring in another coach to help with assessment or another coach to help with instruction or something like that. But those four big things are strong relationships with at least one coach, strong relationships within that team. So if we're working with a team of three to four teachers, they also have to get along with each other um, or at least be on the same page as far as what they're wanting to do. Which brings me into the next thing, they have to have a common goal. Like we need to know, they all need to be striving for the same thing. It's kind of like the image where you see all of the arrows going in opposite directions. We want all of those teacher arrows, all of those goals to be going in the same direction in order for that to happen. 
and then also one area that you can focus on at first that kind of gets the ball rolling. Early on in the stages, relationships have to be the focus. You have to have transparent communication. You have to build that trust and earn that trust with the teachers that you work with. From there, you're able to figure out where your in is. You have to have that buy-in. It's like with anything, you have to have that buy-in. When you have those relationships, when you have that buy-in, then you're able to have those tough conversations. You're able to figure out where can I get in with this teacher? Where is a need that they might have? They're gonna be more willing to talk to you about actual needs that they have instead of surface level things. A lot of times people will say, oh, I need this, or oh, I need this, but it really has to relate with making things. In order to get deep down into like their actual needs, then you really need to have that relation piece. Modern world history was and is still at an early stage right now as far as the coaching model goes. Modern world started out very surface level for first semester where we pretty much just worked as a team only on making a common midterm between the teachers involved. After we came back because of the relationships that were built during that first semester, we were able to reflect and kind of talk about some deeper conversations around collaboration and where they felt like they were with curriculum and pacing and we found a really big disconnect and that was the end. Now what they're doing is they're working as a team twice every two weeks. They're collaborating, they're doing common assessments, and the rigor is really going up and their pacing is pretty much on pace with each other. I think the way that Taylor has helped me is the confidence that she has in what she does and she's helped to kind of push me outside of my comfort zone and has been able to kind of, she's not afraid to say, well, you've been doing it this way, let's take a look and do it this way and maybe it's, you know, more effective. And it has been, so just having that open mindset, I think has helped me just appreciate her and what she's given me. And she's given me like strategies and tools that I can use like for the rest of my career. So it's been a lot less stressful and a lot less kind of, uh, you know, the process of trying to figure out, I tend to overthink things. And so she's helped me like just be confident in just trying something and tweaking it. And the students I feel like have really benefited from that too. As far as with my personal goals, getting into like situations where we have time to like conference with students and really have that one-to-one -one discussion about how we can help them be more successful. I think the overall like planning and structure, she's created documents, instructional calendars and pacing documents that have helped me keep everything in one location. Having that set structure and plan before going into like the actual teaching of the lesson, I can design the lesson to where there are times where I can have those conferences with, with students and kind of meet them where they are. So for the middle stages of coaching, a lot of times the coaches start by building a team culture and getting to know an individual team. Sometimes it's more than one of us coaches working. In the case of the government team, I had been working with them on their instructional strategies and we made a shift towards backwards unit design. In that case, that requires starting with the standards that the team wants to teach for a unit, designing an assessment at the end, and then filling in the middle once we have the two end pieces. I decided, oh, this would be a great opportunity to bring in our assessment coach to help them build the assessment. And it turned out they had already been working with her and I just hadn't even realized it. And I said, great. So we so we got Becca in. She got that uh, assessment ready for the unit. And then once we did the planning together for the instructional part, the next time they had to meet, we had Taylor come in, who they happened to already be working with too, so that they could analyze their data from their test. And from there, we just kind of made it more intentional, all of us coaches. We, we decided to make it a rotational thing where Becca would come in and create that assessment with them. I'd come in afterwards. Sometimes I'm a little long-winded and, and require two coaching sessions to, to get the planning done. And then afterwards, Taylor would come in to do the data analysis of the test. So we just keep that going over and over and over again, and that became our coaching cycle. So they're very flexible. I would say that's probably the best thing about the coaches that they are willing to be when you can, when you have time. You can also reschedule. They make it just easy for you. This year we've had a blend of three separate coaches. They are all experts in three different fields of work. I would say the benefit of that is with having three coaches, you don't get stagnant or bland with one and they can all help you in a different critique of your teaching. 
So I've been given help with data, given help with teaching experiences and like how, to, how to manage classroom environments, and also a specialty in just special education forms, way to do things, data planning, things to do with special education. So all in all, it's, it's, a, it's a great way of making sure that all aspects of my teaching way of doing things has all been helped this year with the coaching. Um, and I've gotten better in all areas. I think the main thing is the data piece of it where I know now which areas to attack prior to the end of course exam to make the students the most successful they can be on the exam. Prior to this, I was kind of flying blind. I was looking at, well, I think the students were struggling on this quiz but I was not getting a standards-based approach. And it helped to have somebody that not only knew the standards and knew how to present, kind of here are the questions that are released from the state, here are the questions that we have on file, and here's how they are connected to that standard to help us to understand if they're getting it in the first place, and if not, after remediation, are they getting it the second or third time around? So we're seeing growth. I'm a big fan of colors. I've, I've told them on the spreadsheet, it helps to have a green, because green means go, they're doing well. It's, it's nice to kind of bring that up and show a student, hey look, on this skill, back in September you were here, in December you're here, now look where you are right now. So you're showing growth. So even if they're not being the most successful they could be on the entire course, they're still showing areas of improvement. They're still getting that boost of energy. I, you know, I always relate it to coaching, sadly, as well, because. You know, when I have an athlete that may not have the greatest jump shot in the world, may not have the greatest defensive skills in the world, if I could say, but look at your rebounds, they have improved. It gives them that positive that, hey, my hard work is paying off in at least some aspect of my game. We're getting that out of students now as well, where they're seeing, all right, well, I'm struggling on keeping the amendment straight, but man, I know the constitutional principles. So that part I have down, I should do fine on the end of course exam just on that area alone, and that could theoretically carry me to a higher score. One of the big goals of coaching is to build teacher and team capacity. And so what that looks like is in the early stages of relationship building with a coach and a team or with a teacher, there's a lot of coach support going on. If you walk into those rooms, you see a lot of the teachers talking or a lot of the coaches talking, obviously the teachers too, but it's really the coaches driving the conversation. Coaches are doing a lot of the follow-up work and, and really working on that buy-in. But then over time, it's important for that to shift so that teachers and teams teams have ownership over their work. And so what that looks like is over time, gradually the coach will start to facilitate the conversations, but the teachers will have a bigger play in it. And then eventually once you reach this place where the teachers have ownership over all of the pieces of what they're doing, they're really guiding the conversation. And the coach is there as a brainstorming partner um, and not really leading those conversations. That's really our goal, is that through this coaching, teachers are taking that ownership and have built the capacity that they're able as, as teachers and as a team to run these, these processes on their own. For the coach, they become really more of a brainstorming partner. Teachers and the teams have become a lot more reflexive um, with one another, and they're just part of that team at that point. And what that's looked like here is that sometimes with you know, with a group that's at that stage, if I'm working with them on something, sometimes I'm there in the meeting, but there's sometimes even that I'll, I'll reach out to them about something we need to meet about and they'll tell me, oh no, we already met, we already did that. That really shows that, that shift in that relationship where teachers aren't dependent on the coach being there to walk through every step because they already, they know what needs to happen, they know how to do it and, um, and they've bought into the importance of it and so they're doing it on their own. Every group of teachers comes in with so many valuable things for their team and, and every team of teachers has things that they need support on. So depending on what those are and on how quickly some of the, the pieces develop really depends on how quickly that shift happened. Uh, we have here, we have a geometry team that's really in that space right now and their shift with their work on their assessments to their ownership was incredibly fast. The first couple times, as a coach, I was leading the conversations and then immediately it became, I was a person in the room kind of taking notes, but they were the ones guiding the conversation. But other groups it might take longer. The comfort around different discussions uh, can take a long time to build. And then once the comfort builds, you still need to build it. Okay, now how do we do it? We're comfortable talking about maybe data, for example, but now how do we do it with your support? How do we do it without your support? So it really depends. Some of the obstacles that educational coaches encounter as they enter new 
educational systems are first that they really have to get teacher buy-in. So we work really hard to jump in and develop close relationships with teachers by getting to know them, by developing trust. Second, I would say we have a hard time just having time to work with teachers. We have to be both imaginative and flexible and work with principals to be really strategic about getting time with teachers. And lastly, I would say, as soon as I walk into a system, I start thinking about what are some ways that I can get teachers to really own the work so that I'm not the one that's always facilitating and leading that work, but they're really the people that are doing it for themselves. And they know that they're able to figure out what is best for their own students. So that in turn just makes the work more personalized and to feel like it is the work of these teachers for those specific students. One great example of that would be our geometry team here at Northwest High School. This group of really energetic teachers and lifelong learners knew exactly what they wanted to see with their students. We spent lots of time three years ago when I started working with them, digging into standards and understanding what it was we had to teach in the class. And then we really shifted our focus to instruction. We thought about what are the shifts in mathematics? What should a mathematics classroom look like? And part of that work had to do with a mathematical mindset book study, and they were all in. They even presented at some of our professional developments. This group of teachers have become a collaborative unit where they meet every single a week, sometimes more than once a week, and they've developed their units of instruction. They have personalized the learning for their students. They collaborate and really work well together to create the best educational setting for their kids. Coaching has helped me improve personally, just challenging me to structure my classroom more student-centered, where the students are providing instruction and teaching to their peers. With having a coach, it kind of gave us a goal in mind of taking our content standards and looking at the model curriculum and how the state wants the standards to be instructed and to create lessons that we feel are most beneficial for our students. Truly the best part is having another person who can help us with the things we don't have time for. I went to one of the coaches this year and I said, I want to be able to post my notes. I want to be able to annotate my notes and post them online. Like what, what resource should I use? How can I go about that? She did all the back end. Then I worked with her and now I use the program every day in class. It's just providing support in those times for those tools that you don't necessarily have time to do on your own. For the two years before the school year, um, the whole math department had worked heavily with Lari Mancini on their developing their curriculum, um, doing a lot of revamps there. So coming into this year, the geometry team reached out and said that they knew that they needed some support on aligning their assessments. So. What, what that looked like was they would show up to our meetings, they'd already have their assessment um, draft ready to go. And we would go through their assessment, tag their items to the standards that were appropriate to them, tag them with taxonomy levels, of how difficult and what type of thinking each question, um, each question relied on. We were intentionally talking about how to spiral old skills into their assessment so we make sure that knowledge doesn't get lost and, um, and then they were having intentional conversations around when to put in state released items since it is a state tested um, course. And they really took, throughout the year, they really took ownership over that. So I, um, I went up to one of the teachers recently and asked if they you know, had um, an assessment coming up. And she said, no, we already, we already did it, we already tagged it, it's already in. And that really shows that, that, full, that full shift that's happened this year. The other piece of the work they've done this year has been around their data. So the purpose of getting the assessments really built up and tagged this way is two parts. One is to make sure that you're assessing the stuff that you want to, um, but then the other one is to set yourself up to be able to analyze the data on the other end. Um, so Taylor has been, Taylor's our data coach. She's been working with them on their data analysis following each assessment because of the work that they put into tagging all of their assessments, Taylor is able to pull their data and say, okay, at this taxonomy level, students scored an average of whatever percent, right? For this standard, this was the standard they did the best on. This is the standard they struggled the most, or this is how they did on released items versus non-released items. 
And so the work that they put into building their assessments really has driven them to a place where they can get the support on looking at their data in a way that is a lot deeper than, well, most score, kids scored whatever percent, and they can really look at student learning, what this means about the students, where are they learning, where do they need more help. So looking forward to next year with this group, uh, their assessment work is really gonna be a lot more fine tuning. They're gonna be looking at how are they prioritizing different concepts and skills and standards during the unit versus are those the same weight being prioritized in their assessments. Um, and that's really fine tuning work. I think the big work for that group next year is gonna be starting to take ownership over um, their data. They're great at looking at data, working with it, talking about it. Um, they're very comfortable with it. I think the push is gonna be, okay, how do we, how do we get by the end of next year, how do we get them to the point so that they don't need it to be collected from someone else? So either looking within the system that's already there or pulling, starting to pull the data um, and collecting it on their own. Coaching has been a new aspect of our teaching this year, um, but it's something that we're somewhat familiar with in the past. Um, it's really helped us take a good look at improving our teaching because we make a more conscious effort every time we approach a lesson to ask ourselves the question, like who is doing the math? Are we just telling them the math and then asking them to practice it and repeat it? Or are we kind of being the guide as they discover the math? So coaching has really helped us to ask ourselves that question when we make lessons, who's doing the math? Years ago when we first started, we were kind of just um, teaching the standards that the district gave us. Now we're more um, taking the model curriculum that the state has and unpacking the standards and chunking the curriculum to where we think would fit our students best. Knowing and understanding our curriculum a lot better has helped I think our students too. Knowing that we can understand what's going on with their curriculum and then the relaying that to our students, I think it all just kind of works really well and our coaches has kind of helped us guide us to do that. We definitely took apart all of our standards. It took us almost an entire day and we planned out the entire year. Um, and that was just kind of like something our coaches talked about us, talked with us a couple years ago and we just kind of took initiative this year and really, really took uh, a hold of that. As you've seen, our teacher-based teams are at different places in this collaborative journey, but it's been very exciting and extremely rewarding to see the work evolve as the relationship between our teachers and coaches has grown over the course of the year. We're confident that the work we're doing this year and next year will help set up a course for us to continue to improve with instruction here at Northwest High School and that we will be back better and stronger than we were before the pandemic.